Hello, everybody, and greetings from the Delta College Planetarium. My name is Brian, and I'm here to bring you the next episode in our continuing series about the constellations. Last time, we examined the hero Perseus, rescuing Princess Andromeda. This time, we're going to look at a nearby constellation. Remember that in the autumn, we begin our star-hopping adventures from the Autumn Square, a set of four stars high overhead that make a nearly perfect square. The constellation Andromeda radiates away from the upper left-hand corner of the square, forming a curved V-shape of stars. The constellation we are looking for is just below Andromeda's legs. Just below that curved V-shape is a set of three close-together stars that form a triangle. Together, these three form the constellation Triangula, or the Triangle. No, this isn't a joke. Triangulum is a real constellation. It was described by the astronomer Ptolemy in the 2nd century, and is mentioned as far back as the ancient Babylonians. Triangulum has been a recognized constellation for thousands of years. Triangulum is small, simple, and faint. It doesn't typically hold any interest for stargazers. So why am I wasting an entire episode to talk about this constellation? It's because there's something else up here. Under optimal conditions, the human eye might be able to see it, but you would be hard-pressed to find some place that offers those conditions. No, photography is perhaps the best way to find it. Because just above Triangulum is another galaxy. Messier 33, the Triangulum Galaxy, is the next closest galaxy to the Milky Way after the Andromeda Galaxy. Together, the three galaxies are the largest members of the local group, the cluster of galaxies to which we belong. Triangulum is a spiral galaxy turned face-on to the Milky Way, and about half the size of the Milky Way. It is slightly further away from us than the Andromeda Galaxy, 2.7 million light years compared to 2.5 million light years, but it is considerably closer to Andromeda. In fact, it's moving towards Andromeda more than it's moving towards the Milky Way, meaning that Triangulum is falling towards Andromeda. It's not clear yet if Triangulum is in orbit around Andromeda, or if this is the first encounter of the two galaxies. So let's talk about the local group, our local neighborhood of galaxies. The two largest houses on the block are the Milky Way and Andromeda. Andromeda is up to twice the size of the Milky Way. Triangulum is the third largest, at about 60% the size of the Milky Way. These are the three largest members of the group, but there are many other smaller members. Triangulum may be in orbit around Andromeda, and Andromeda already has a few galaxies in orbit around it. Among these satellite galaxies, the largest are M110 and M32. Any wide field image of Andromeda will show these two galaxies. The Milky Way also has satellite galaxies, but to see them you need to be south of the equator. A common sight to people living in the southern hemisphere are two cloudy structures separate from the Milky Way in the sky. These are the large and small Magellanic Clouds. They are separate galaxies in orbit around the Milky Way. There are many more smaller dwarf galaxies in orbit around the Milky Way, and the remnants of others. But they can only be detected through sensitive methods. They reveal the future history of our galactic neighborhood, though. The galaxies in the local group will tend to merge. Triangulum appears to be on a course to interact strongly with Andromeda, and the Milky Way and Andromeda are on a collision course, smashing into each other about 4.5 billion years from now. It is likely that these three major galaxies will ultimately merge, and many of their satellite companions along with them. While we can't see what it will look like when the galaxies of the local group collide, we can observe other galaxies in different stages of merging with their neighbors. When we talk about galactic mergers, it can conjure images of violent crashes, but it's important to keep in mind that galaxies are big, and mostly made of empty space. Remember, the closest star to the sun is about 25 trillion miles away. So when these galaxies come together, almost none of the stars actually crash into each other. The stars mostly pass right by each other, and their orbits are disrupted. They can be pulled out in long filaments, some ejected from the galaxy entirely. Over hundreds of millions to billions of years, the gravity of these galaxies will pull their centers of mass together, and the stars will settle into a new galactic shape. 
So if it's clear where you are tonight, go out and search for triangular. If you have a telescope or a camera, try to see if you can find the triangular galaxy falling towards Andromeda. And take a moment to appreciate the beauty of a spiral galaxy for a brief moment in time in our ever-evolving universe. That's it for today. Next time, we'll continue our exploration of the fall sky. This is Brian from the Delta College Planetarium, wishing you clear skies.